This is the new Rolls-Royce Cullinan Black Badge. It's like a normal Cullinan, only it has some styling upgrades and some performance upgrades. And in this video, I'm gonna talk you around its exterior design. What I've gotta say here, I've gotta say what I think. Show you inside. It is glorious. Point out some of its most interesting features. Mm, look how thick and luscious that is. Tell you what's not so good about it. I'm probably gonna run over with this shoot. Take it for a drive. Is it because you are jealous? Oh, jealous eyes. And yeah, I'm gonna poke it with a stick, aren't I? A sports exhaust on a Rolls Royce, God damn it! Anyway, before we get into the review, make sure you subscribe to this channel. Hit the bell icon to turn your notifications on so you're alerted when we make a new upload. Please do that, because if you've been watching for years and years, you've never done it, 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 it breaks my heart. It really does, so subscribe. Also, if you want to check out the new CarWow app, yeah, CarWow app, it's awesome actually. Click on the pop-out banner up there and you can download it either from the Apple Store or the Google Play Store. So go do that as well. There are premium SUVs like a BMW X7 which will cost them around £80,000. Then there are luxury SUVs like the Bentayga which will cost them around £150,000. And then there's the Rolls-Royce Cullinan SUV, which is far more reassuringly expensive. It starts from £265,000 or £305,000 if you want the black badge. This car with options, £380,000 per ching. Let's talk about the Cullinan's design. Now, it's an absolutely massive thing, isn't it? Look at it, it's huge. Down here, though, being the black badge, we've got... A sports exhaust on a Rolls Royce, god damn it! The exhaust pipes within there are real, look. I'm proving it with the oversized car wire stick of truth. This is the first ever SUV or four wheel drive since Rolls Royce was founded back in 1906. In fact, Rolls doesn't call this an SUV, it's called an XUV, as in luxury SUV. You, I don't know, I'm getting all confused. Anyway, they say it's the first SUV with a three box design, like a normal saloon car. The first box is the bonnet, second box is this part here, and the third box, which is supposed to be saloon like, is this bit here, it's supposed to be like a boot. I'm not really seeing it. Do you know what I'm seeing? Don't. Don't say it. But I've got to say it. I've got to say no. what I think. It looks a bit like a London and Gap. Oh, oh, I was trying to hold that in. Rolls probably aren't going to lend me a car again for saying that. But it kind of does, doesn't it? Sorry. Still, it's massive. It's huge. Look at it. And you can see the relationship to the Phantom as well. Actually, underneath the skin, it's pretty much the same as the Phantom. It's based on the Phantom platform. So anyone who says, oh, it's just the BMW X7, because after all, BMW owns Rolls Royce. It's not. They're wrong. It's a Rolls, a proper Rolls, built in Britain, in Goodwood, by men and their hands. Look at the front of it. Wow, it's huge. Apparently, the light design here with this thick brow is supposed to look like the brow of a Saxon warrior. Okay then. When you first sit in a colour nun, it's a bit of a weird experience. The way that you have that huge Rolls-Royce bonnet, but it's just even higher than in any other Rolls-Royce. The interior feels just like a Rolls-Royce should do. Impeccable quality. Oh, it's all just so lovely. And there's metal everywhere. Metal, 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 metal. Then there's super soft leather, leather. Leather here as well, leather. And this being the black badge, you get carbon fibre here, carbon fibre here, carbon fibre there, and here as well. Then there's the yellow piping you get with the black badge model as well, which just sets off the interior. It is glorious. Though I have found a couple of cheap bits of plastic, and they're all just round here. The controller for the steering wheel, the stalks. That's all that I can complain about, because other than that, yeah, it's lovely. There's decent practicality too, so storage, cup holders, little glove box, decent door bins. I'm happy about that. I'm also happy about this, the grab handles. Not your usual plastic crap, soft leather and metal. Well, yeah, living the Rolls Royce lifestyle. The rear of the Cullinan is just as luxurious as the front seats. It's not quite as roomy, maybe, as the Phantom, but who's complaining? I've got loads of room, loads of headroom as well. If you need to carry three, you can. That's fine. It's a very wide car, you'll be able to fit three people across this, no problem at all. You can carry babies. Look, there's a sign that says you can there for your ISOFIX points. Brilliant. If you need to carry long items, look, you've got through loading there. Practical, you see. It's an SUV. Sorry, 
XUV. This is a bit uninteresting though. I've seen all this before, not particularly special. Yeah, great. I'll tell you what is unusual though, the way you sit back from the main door and your head's near the quarter light. Sort of reminds me of a black cab. Oh, I've done it again. Definitely not gonna get another Rolls Royce, am I? Bugger. Anyway, let's check out the boot. Oh, that's an annoying thing, isn't it? Look at this. I can close the door electrically by pressing this button, but I can't open it by pressing the button. I have to do it manually. Now, Rolls might argue that, well, someone's gonna come and open the door for you because you're very important, but occasionally they might not. And so you have to struggle. And because it's mounted here, the hinge, it's really hard to open it there because you have to put a lot of pressure on. So you have to push there instead. Now, the reason you can't open it electrically is because if you press a button, it opens up and hits a cyclist or something, someone might sue Rolls Royce. Whereas if you physically opened it yourself, then it's your own fault. Yeah, anyway, boot. The capacity is 560 litres, which is more than a Bentley Bentayga, but less than an Aston Martin DBX. And if you click on the pop-out banner up there, you can watch my in-depth video on the Aston Martin DBX. So check out the boot. Lovely carpeting. The parcel shelf is extremely oop, expensive. Yeah, I won't be chucking this into the bushes. Absolutely not, can't afford to do that. It's really handy that you've got this that you can sit on. You can fold in the seats electrically, of course. Just takes its time. There you go. Then you can fill it full of stuff and push into the front, such as the parcel shelf. Take it out of temptation's way. Because I was just itching to give it a slinging into the bushes. You might be wondering, What's going on here? This is gonna be hard to load stuff with that there. What's going on with that? It's all a bit odd, isn't it? Well, I'm gonna come back to that later in this video as part of the cool things on this Cullinan, of which there are many, as you'll find out now. Being the black badge model, this car has various elements that would normally be in silver shiny chrome in black chrome. Grill surround, spirit of ecstasy, this thing, that bit, this part, that part, and the Rolls Royce badges. Also, black badge models come pre-selected with black paint, which is seven and a half thousand pounds, and the pinstriping, which is a further 1,100 pounds. Now, when I say pre-selected, you still have to pay for them, but they're just automatically ticked because that's how the black badge car should look. Though you can still have it any color that you want. Confusing. If a normal VIN plate just isn't posh enough for you, then you can get this special one here, which is more like a plaque. It will cost you over 600 pounds though. The black badge model also gets upgraded alloy wheels, so you have 22 inches as standard instead of the normal puny 21s. There's upgraded brakes as well with, oh my gosh, red brake calipers. The first time ever on a Rolls. As with other Rolls, though, you have those centre caps which stay the right way up when you're driving along. Looks really cool. The infotainment system is a reworked version of BMW's previous generation iDrive, so it's altogether pretty decent. And if you look though, the images of the vehicle are of the Cullinan. You also have the really cool surround view camera system, once again, from BMW, when you can look all around the car and look, at least it is a Cullinan, yet again. When you turn off the car, it does this. It hides the infotainment system away, which is kind of cool, but I do wish it did that thing that the Bentley systems do now, where you can rotate the dash to show analog dials or just wood. Now, if you want to see my full in-depth video review of the Bentley Flying Spur, just click up there. Speaking of the Bentley Flying Spur, that has part digital dials, as does this car. Look, looks traditional, but the actual rev counter and everything is a digital image. Nice touch. For £900, you can get the optional lambswool carpets. Mm, look how thick and luscious that is. Do you know what? I could use that as a bath mat at home. I think I might just take it. If you want your own personal seating for when you're at the races, you can pay Rolls-Royce £13,000 to have this optional boot seating installed. Isn't it glorious? I like how it's electrically operated, though sadly it is only up to this point, and then you have to manually put the backs up yourself. I'm too rich to do this. Now be gone. Ah, it's better. For £6,500, you can have the 
shooting star headliner which has up to 1340 different LEDs into the headlining and it mimics the constellation of stars over the Goodwood factory. It's lovely and there's eight different shooting star animations. As with the Phantom, the Cullinan has umbrellas built into the rear doors. An idea that Skoda copied. In fact, we've got a Skoda Scala long-term car, and this is the umbrella from the door of that car, so I'm just going to swap them over. There we go. That should do. And keep this. No one will know. So I've got this and a new bath mat. Brilliant. Black badge models have this little infinity symbol about the place. It's a reference to a record-breaking speedboat, which was ridden, driven, captained by Malcolm Campbell back in the 1930s. That was powered by Rolls-Royce engines and it's just a symbol of power and history and stuff. You can get the Cullinan with a tow hitch which is electrically deployed. It costs you over £2,000 but then you can use your Rolls-Royce to tow a caravan or more likely a horse box. Fancy some fine dining in the back of your Rolls-Royce SUV? No problem, there are some electrically operated, exquisite picnic tables. Oh, and if you pay an extra £5,000, you get a rear entertainment system. Lovely, lovely, lovely. And you can control the satellite navigation from here as well if you want to. The Cullinan gets self-leveling air suspension as standard. You can alter the ride height depending on how you want it. Also, it has two cameras just behind here which can read the road ahead and it will set up the suspension specifically either firmer or softer depending on what the camera sees. Also you have active anti-roll bars to stop it leaning about too much in the corners. There's also rear wheel steering to make it a bit more manoeuvrable but all these things you have on the Phantom. However there are two buttons that you don't get on the Phantom that you only get on the Cullinan and they're these. An off-road button which sets up things like the suspension, the steering, the gearbox and the engine for going off-road. There's also hill descent control to help you safely down a slope. Obviously, there's lots and lots of things to like about this Cullen, but it's not all perfect. And here's some annoying things about it. For instance, this clock, because it's black, you can't really see it from the driver's seat. I have no idea what time it is. I'm probably gonna run over with this shoot. While it's wonderful that the Cullinan gets massage seats as standard with eight different settings and three different intensities, it's a bit annoying where they've located the button because when you're sat in your seat, you can't actually see it to press it and get the right setting you want. It's a bit of an ask that as standard, this SUV doesn't have rear seats that recline. If you want that, you have to pay extra for the opulence pack. Probably doesn't really matter for someone who can afford this kind of car. It's more just the hassle of having to tick one more box. You might forget. Rolls-Royce is very proud of the fact that its SUV has a wading depth of over half a metre. Now I'm going to put that into perspective for you because a Range Rover has a wading depth of almost one metre. One metre. You could swim in one metre, not half a metre. In left-hand drive markets, you can get something called sanctuary seats, and that includes a glass panel which separates off the cabin from the boot so that if someone opens the boot and it's freezing outside, you don't get cold. For some reason, you can't get it with right-hand drive cars. The Cullinan gets Rolls-Royce's 6.75 litre twin-turbo V12. Normally, it has 570 horsepower and 850 newton metres of torque, but in the black badge, you get 600 horsepower and 900 newton metres of torque, and it sounds a little bit more fruity when you rev it. Yes, that upgraded black badge sports exhaust is just a bit more shouty, though it's still ever so refined. Now it's time to find out what this Rolls-Royce Cullinan Black Badge is like to drive. So the first thing I'm noticing is the novelty of being sat up this high in a Rolls-Royce. I can see why they built this thing. It's pretty obvious. It was a hole in their product lineup they just needed to fill. People love SUVs and people love Rolls-Royces. Combine the two and you have quite a few sales for such a normally niche brand and product. The Black Badge, that has something a little bit special going on. You see, it's got a, dare I say it's sportier edge? Sounds a bit odd in a Rolls Royce. In fact, there is a sports button in the car, but it doesn't say sport, it says low. It's low, it's just here. Now, when I press that, you get different mapping for the throttle and the gearbox. And with the Black Badge, it's more aggressive than in any other normal Rolls Royce. So it means that when I put my foot down, it just instantly takes off. If this wasn't a black badge model, it would have been smoother, the pickup. Also, the gears change with more ferocity when you're in this low mode and with more ferocity than they do in a normal 
Rolls-Royce Cullinan. The suspension is firmer as well in the black badge over the normal Cullinan. And the Cullinan's normal suspension anyway just feels a bit stiffer than the Phantoms. It's not quite so wafty when you come onto a twisty section of road. This car does all right. It'll go around corners as well as you need it to. And of course you've got four wheel drive grip. Another thing you notice with the black badge model is the exhaust more when you're driving. It's quite interesting a Rolls Royce making that sound. You don't expect it, but it's nice and it's never obtrusive either. While the black badge may have a sportier edge than the normal Cullinan, it's still not sporty to drive as a Bentley Bentayga. And if you click on the pop-out banner up there, you can see my full in-depth video review of that SUV. I'd love to take it off road, but I can't. I can't risk it. I don't want to scratch the paintwork and get hit with a bill to have it repaired. Oh, that's a good thing. The brakes are strong. They're smooth, they're progressive. There's a long travel to the pedal, but they do a good job of hauling this behemoth to a halt. It does feel like you're captain in the ship though, a little bit. But I kind of like it for that. It's got character, it's got style. Well, not so much style, it's got presence. Definitely presence. Style, it's debatable. Let's just get out of low mode and relax again. And now I can appreciate how quiet it is in here. Rolls-Royce has fitted this car with so much sound insulation. In fact, there's twice the weight of me in terms of soundproofing fitted to this car. You've got double glazing windows. You've also got foam in the tires so you don't hear any road noise. That all makes this car brilliant for cruising on the motorway. So do the super comfy seats, which are almost infinitely adjustable. I've back to back this car with the Phantom and the Phantom is definitely slightly more comfortable. It feels more luxurious still than this, but that's not taking anything away from the Cullinan. It's still very luxurious in its own right. You can just chew up the miles in this thing. Just ignore the fact it enters 17 miles per gallon, but who cares, you've got loads of money. You own a Rolls Royce, it's not a problem. The problem is having to stop to fill it up. Although it's got a huge tank, so you don't have to do it all that often considering. It's quite interesting driving it on these narrow roads. Can it cope? with these bends, that's fine. Oh, here's one little test for the car. Will people wait for it? Bearing in mind, I'm in a Rolls Royce. Now you could have left me more space than that, couldn't you? Thank you, kind sir. Is it because you are jealous? Oh, jealous eyes. <laughs> little does he know this is not my car. I'm just borrowing it for a few days to film for you guys. Oh, and again, with, it's posing a bit of a problem. I'll tell you another problem with the Cullinan and that is trying to fit it into a normal size parking bay. So here I have a car park with some reasonably generously sized bays. Can I fit in the entire bay without spilling out of it? Like a fat person in two small clothes. Let's have a look. Go on to 360 degree camera. Oh it looks like I've just about filled the gap but I may have just squeezed in. Still, it might be a bit difficult if this car's parked next to me because you can see where the doors open <laughs> on this graphic. Still, that's a small price to pay for being able to drive one of these as your daily. So then, what's my final verdict on the Rolls-Royce Cullinan? Well, this is without doubt the most luxurious SUV I've ever been in. Also, it's very much an SUV that feels like a Rolls-Royce. The only thing is though, if you're not actually planning on going off road, I wouldn't have this. I just have the Phantom because in my opinion, it just looks better. If you enjoyed this video, please subscribe to this channel for more videos. And if you click on the deals box to the right, you can see how much you can save on a new car at CarWow. Or click on the video windows below to watch another of my videos.